Well, since it's swarm season, I wanted to give everyone some more tips on putting out swarm traps like the one you see behind me. Looks like spring might be coming early. Hopefully uh, that's the case. And uh, the temperatures in North Georgia in zone eight where I live have been getting right around 65 to 70 degrees every day. So I'm really excited about that. And if it's not that nice where you are, don't worry. It's coming soon and take advantage of these tips that I'm gonna share with you today. I've got three tips for you on using your swarm traps to catch bees this spring. Tip number one, if you're like me that uses all natural comb, I don't use any wax or plastic foundation in my frames. So it's very important that you level your hive side to side so that everything is nice and plumb when the bees draw their comb. Let's go in the shop and I'll demonstrate that to you real quick and then we'll come back out here for some more tips. So here's a quick demonstration on why it's so important to use a level when you're putting up your swarm traps. So if they're not level, you'll see I'm just using a string with a, a, a screwdriver that goes on the end of a drill. This is not a plum, but anyway, just to give you the idea that bees always draw their comb according to gravity. So that never changes, that's a constant. But what does change is the way you hang your swarm trap. So this is why if you don't hang at level, I'm gonna just demonstrate to you just a little bit. If your swarm trap is off just a little bit, now the bees are gonna draw, they're gonna start from the top, but then they're gonna draw down and they're going to miss the bottom of the frame. So if, if I move just a little bit, that's all it took and now I'm here and if I move this way just a little bit now my bees are drawing comb on that side so we want our bees to draw that comb perfectly level and perfectly plumb so use your level and you're going to do just fine commercial beekeepers when they load uh, their beehives on a pallet they don't care if they're level or not because they're using all foundation wax or plastic foundation and they can be crooked, they can, and in fact they are. They set them out there and as long as they're, you know, fairly level to the eye, you know, from about 100 feet away, it's fine. But for beekeepers that want their bees to draw natural comb without using any wax or plastic foundation, which is what I recommend, that's what the bees prefer, they're going to be the happiest that way but you want to make sure that your hive is level side to side. I always have a level in my truck. I drive around with it all year long because when I'm hanging up swarm traps like this one, I want to make sure that they're absolutely level. One time I left my level home and I was eyeballing it and then I came back a couple days later just to check on it and I was way off. So I'm glad that I corrected it before any bees took it over because this way all the comb will be nice and straight. So once I get my swarm trap in position, I just level it up like this. And it's real easy to make adjustments. Um, you can probably see right here, all I did was I took a branch and I just broke it, wedged it in there, just to get it right where I want it before I tighten up the ratchet strap. So that's how I like to do it, and it's real easy. And it literally takes, probably on average for me, it takes me about 10 minutes to hang a swarm trap and get it dialed in with a level. So there's a helpful tip that'll make sure that your comb that the bees draw is nice and straight. Tip number two that I wanna share with you today is uh, if you place your swarm traps in an area that you drive back and forth on a regular basis, that's gonna help you keep up with it because once bees take a swarm trap like this one, they build up fast in the spring. They build up real quick. And if you don't get out here on a regular basis, I try to check my swarm traps every two weeks at the least, maybe 10 days on average. So put them in an area where you drive frequently so that all you have to do is maybe go down a side road that's on the main route to wherever it is you go. So if you're getting your kids from school or if you're going shopping to a certain location on a regular basis, and if there's a good spot along that route, that's really a good place for you to put a swarm trap because it's not out of your way. You're not gonna have to make a separate trip just to see if bees took the swarm trap. Another good tip that I wanna share with you is, let's say for example, that you do have a really good location to put a swarm trap up, but it's not somewhere that you go on a regular basis. In fact, maybe it's well out of your way. It could be an hour drive or more in an area that you never drive. 
Well, I like to leave my contact information on those swarm traps, and I just tell the owner of the property, if they don't mind keeping an eye on it for me, send me a picture if they see any bees going in or out. They can just use their smartphone and take a quick video or a picture with their phone and send it to you. And that's really good because now you don't have to worry about driving out there and the owner of the property is usually more than happy to keep you updated because they're curious about those bees as well. They want to see if any bees are living in their areas. Sometimes people are surprised because they don't even think honeybees are living where they are. And I've heard that, especially on this one that I, uh, I did uh, not too long ago, it was last year, I caught a swarm in an area and the owner of the property says, you can put a swarm trap up, but we never see bees. So knock your socks off. Well, that, I caught a swarm there and it turned out to be one of my strongest colonies and I'm really excited about that and you're going to see that in an upcoming video as well. Make sure you put your swarm traps out early enough to catch those strong colonies that are going to cast the early swarms. So I'm in zone 8 and every time the daffodils come up where I live that means I've got about two weeks to get my swarm traps out because by early March there's going to be the strong colonies casting swarms and those are the ones you want to catch. The earlier you can catch your swarms, the more time they have to build up, even to the point where they can be split. So just in review, just make sure that you place your swarm traps along a, a route that you travel and make sure they're nice and level. That's tip number one. Make sure they're nice and level. Even if you're using foundation, it's a good habit to get into to level your hive and level your swarm traps. Tip number two is just make sure that you've got contact information on your hive or your swarm trap. If you're leaving them in an area that you don't frequent too often, the homeowner can then text you a quick photo and let you know that there's bees in your swarm trap. Hopefully that'll happen for you. And tip number three again is just make sure you get your swarm traps out early enough so that you can catch those early swarms. Now putting out swarm traps is actually step three in the process of beekeeping for the year. Step number one is education. I always see people spend tons of money, especially new beekeepers, they spend tons of money on stuff like flow hives, um, fancy designer hives, which there's nothing wrong with, but it's very important to have a good foundation in understanding beekeeping. So I encourage you to check out my uh, introduction to natural beekeeping. It's a free video that uh, demonstrates uh, what the whole course is all about. If you want to check it out, I got the links in the description below. But always spend money on educating yourself. After that, if you decide you want to get some of the fancy stuff that goes along with beekeeping, you can have at it and you'll have a real good grasp of why you're even using some of the things they sell. You don't need most of what they sell. So, for the price of what a package of bees would cost to have shipped to your house, you can get the whole course and then even learn how to catch bees for free just like we're doing today. So until next time friends, enjoy beekeeping and we'll see you at the next video.